I want to welcome you to uh, fourth quarter CEU devotionals today. We're starting a new series on the life of Joseph and going to be talking for the next 10 sessions on passing the test. Now, I know as teachers, uh, all of you are very familiar with tests, but at this point in your life, you're more accustomed to getting tests or giving tests than receiving tests. But the reality is in all of our lives, we are constantly faced with tests. Um, some of them are put there in our life to teach us lessons, to make us stronger, to prepare us for other challenges in our life. But nonetheless, life is a series of tests. And so we're going to talk about the story of Joseph uh, in, this, in this series. And I want to actually start today at the end of Joseph's uh, story. So, um, and, and then we will, next week, we will uh, pick back up from the, from the beginning. But I think it's good and helps us give us perspective when we start at the end of, of his story. Uh, so today I want to read you a scripture out of Genesis 45. Now Joseph had, had been in command in, in Egypt now for nine years. So he had uh, experienced seven years of, of plenty as a, as a leader there. And if you will remember the story of God giving him a dream that Egypt would have seven years of, of bountiful harvest and, and of, of prosperity. Uh, and then there would come seven years of famine. And so during that first seven years of prosperity, the people were to store up grain and to store up the surplus so they had enough to live on during the seven years of plenty. So they are now two years into this, into this famine time. This would be uh, some 22 years uh, after, after Joseph had originally received the dream from God that his brothers would bow down to him one day. Uh, so this was 22 years later now that we're picking this story up in Genesis 45. His brothers have come on behalf of the family uh, to try to acquire grain for their, for their family because the famine uh, left them with nothing, nothing to eat. And so they were in a desperate place. They had already come to, to Joseph once and now they are back. And in verse 3, Joseph confronts his brothers and said, I am Joseph. And he asked, is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. And when they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into, in, or sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed. And do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. And, and here's the line I want us to, to focus in on. We'll hear this three times in these, in these following verses. But this is where I believe Joseph really came in touch with the purpose of God for his life. This is 22 years after he was given a dream, but I don't think he understood the purposes of those dreams until, until this moment here. He said, do not be afraid or be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Get those three words in your spirit. God sent me. For two years now, there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years, there will be no plowing or reaping. And again, he says it, but God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Verse number eight, so then it was not you, and again, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household and ruler of all of Egypt. In this moment, Joseph finally realizes God's purposes for his life. Now, I, I believe it's important to set this series up as we're going to talk about the different tests life will afford us to start with the end in mind and understand that God has a purpose for each of our lives. God is a purposeful God, and he, he has a purpose for each of us. And so I just want to give you a few thoughts today 
uh, on, on how to discover and fulfill your promise, and if you will, pass the purpose test in, in this life. Uh, first, first thought is this, we need to believe that we have a purpose. You need to believe that you have a purpose. Um, believe it or not, the, the number one question that people have when it comes to faith and life is, what is my purpose? What is my purpose in life? For what purpose has God put me on this earth? And again, I want to say that God is a purposeful God, not a, not a purposeless God. He did not create anything without a purpose. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. God created trees for a purpose. God created water for a purpose. God created animals for a purpose. Now, most of us are still trying to figure out what the purpose of mosquitoes are, but for everything he created with a purpose. Uh, you think of, of an item that is, that is man-made that I, that I uh, saw this week. Uh, it, was a, it was an item in the local hardware store. There's a stick about this long, and it had this little suction cup thing on the end of it. And I thought, now what would the purpose of a stick this long with a suction cup on the end of it be? Uh, it, it, it just marveled. I marveled at, at it as I, as I looked at it. And I thought, you know, this could be like a giant cookie cutter, right? That you, you put down and, and made giant cookies. Or if you turned it upside down and stuck it in the ground, it could be like some kind of bird bath for, for hummingbirds or something. Or uh, for bald guys like me, you could like stick it on the back of your head and uh, it would cover up that bald spot. And because of the suction, it wouldn't fly off when you're driving down the road on your motorbike. Um, or maybe you just, if you're in the pre-K room, you just stick it down on the floor and you play ring toss on it, right? Now, uh, those all sound like fun ideas, but the reality is, is this object is a plunger. And it had one purpose when it was created. Whoever it was, Mr. R.A. Plunger, whoever invented this item, had one thing in mind. It's a, it's a messy, nasty job but it has one purpose, and we all, we all know what the purpose of a plunger is. Um, the, the, the truth is, in our lives, our Creator created each one of us with a, with a purpose. Um, he had something specific in mind when He created you. And as we begin this series, uh, I, I want to begin with that thought that God has a purpose for your life. Now, some of you might not believe that about yourself, but if you're ever going to become all that God has created you to be, you have to understand that you have purpose. The second thing is, is you need to understand that God is in control. And, and for, you, for you to achieve your purpose, you need to understand this because you're going to go through some setbacks in life. Uh, you're going you're gonna to go through some hard times. There are going to be some unexpected things that happen to you in this life uh, that perhaps will be hurtful. Uh, things will not always go your way. And in those moments, you better know who is in control. Um, th think, about, think about this for a moment, going back to the, the verse we read in, in Genesis 45. Joseph said, And now do not be distressed. And do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me. Now over the next many weeks, we're going to talk about all the things that Joseph had to go through. Being thrown into a pit by his, by his brothers, being sold into slavery, being falsely accused, um, living in, in prison. There were so many setbacks that, that, that Joseph had, so many tests that he, had to, that he had to take and that he had to pass before he stepped into his destiny. Can you imagine what would have happened if Joseph would have gave up when his brothers threw him in that pit? If Joseph would have gave up on God when he was, when he was sold into slavery? 
Um, if, if, he would have, if he would have lost track of the fact that God was in control, he would have missed out on his entire destiny. But through prison, through slavery, through becoming falsely accused, Joseph knew that God had sent him. I want to I give you this thought, and I want you to, to, to grab a hold of this and, and hold on to it. Um, because this is so important for every single one of us. No one can derail you from the purposes of God in your life except you. I know all of us have had people who have hurt us, who have mistreated us, uh, who have done bad things to us. Those people do not have the power to derail us from the purposes of God unless we give it to them. Um, just, as, just as in Joseph's life, he said of his brothers, you might, have, you might have thought you were getting rid of me and you might have thought you were doing evil to me, but God was actually setting me up for something else. Joseph knew that only God held his purposes or held the purposes in mind for his life. Um, Romans 8.28 reminds us that all things work together for good to those who love God and have been called according to His purpose. God has a purpose for our life even when things go wrong. Um, here's the good news Here's the good news about all of us when it comes to taking tests that, that God would give us. Um, when, we, when we fail it, He doesn't put a big F at the top of the page. It's just merely a retake. And He allows us the opportunity to retake the test until we pass it. So perhaps you haven't been feeling too good about the purposes of God in your life and maybe you thought that, that God had a purpose for everyone and everything but you. Well, it's time that you retake that test and understand that God does have a purpose of your life and it's time for you to step in to those purposes. Um, the, the way that I believe that we do this best is by adopting a, a positive attitude and an optimistic attitude uh, towards, towards the circumstances of life that come against us. As, as someone once said, uh, I can't control what you do to me, but I can control how I respond to what you do to me. Um, some people by nature are just pessimistic and they have a negative look on, on everything that will happen in, that, in life. I believe God wants us to look at things uh, through, through a lens of, of optimism in this life, understanding that he, He's in control, which means when things go bad, our attitudes don't have to go bad with them. Like the, like the, the soldier who was in basic training and, and they were teaching his squad how to jump out of airplanes. And um, they, they explained to him, hey, when you jump out of this plane, you're going to reach over to your right shoulder and you're going to pull that, that, that parachute cord and it's going to open up. Uh, and, and you're going you're gonna to navigate yourself down to the ground. But if the right chute doesn't open up, then reach to your left shoulder and pull that chute. Or, and and it'll, then the emergency chute will open up, and um, you'll, you'll be fine. And then when you get to the ground, there will be some trucks there that will be waiting on you and pick you up and bring you back to the barracks. Well, uh, this soldier just wasn't too optimistic and about the idea of jumping out of an airplane. He was very nervous and apprehensive, and so he jumped out, and he pulled that right chute, and nothing happened. And he said, I knew this thing would not open. I knew that it wouldn't open. So he reached over, and he pulled the, the left chute. Nothing happened. And he said again, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I knew this wouldn't work. In fact, this guy was so pessimistic that his army buddy said the last thing they heard him say is he came whizzing past them at lightning speed. I bet the trucks won't be there either. Some people just have this natural ability of looking on the dim side of every situation. I want to challenge you to understand God has a purpose for your life and God is in control of everything that happens. So don't lose focus when bad things happen. Keep a mind that is focused on Him. 
Stay positive, as, as the Word tells us. Keep a positive confession of faith. And it'll change your ability to go through things like Joseph did and says, you know what? God sent me through this. The third thing I want to give you is, is this idea of we need to discover our gifts and our direction in life. Um, Romans 12, 4, 4 says, if, if just as each of us has a body with many members and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we though many form one body and each member belongs to the others. Now, here, here's the unique thing about Joseph. Uh, Joseph had this incredible gift of leadership in his life. And in every, every season that we find Joseph, every test, every new environment that he was in, that gift of leadership always, always worked in his life. And God has given each of you gifts. It might not be the same gift that I have. You won't, I won't have the same gift you have. But all of us have gifts. And those gifts will work in any season of life that we are in, in any test that, that, that we are going through. And all of these gifts have purpose. And when we operate in these, in these giftings, uh, we, find a, we find a sense of, of fulfillment. Uh, and this is, this is what happened with Joseph. This is why I believe he was able to find contentment in, in Potiphar's house. This is why I believe he was able to find a place of peace in, in prison because he, he was still living and using his gifts. Uh, so I encourage you, I encourage you to, to know what your gifting is and, and let that help you find direction in your, in your life. And the fourth and closing thought for us today is we need to set our course and be faithful. Set our course and be faithful. Proverbs 18, 16 says, a gift opens the way and ushers a giver into the presence of the great. Now, Joseph, Joseph um, when, he, when he first had this dream, he didn't understand what the purposes of the dream was. Um, but he did know that God had given them th that dream. And we're going to talk about that a little in our, in our next lesson. But even though he didn't understand what the fulfillment of this, of this dream would look like, um, he still knew that this dream was from, was from God. And so he set his course from the very beginning, and he was, he was faithful to that course. When he found himself in slavery, he was faithful. When he found himself in prison, he was faithful. He never knew where those moments would lead them, but he did know that God had given him a dream and, and he stayed true and he stayed faithful all of those years. Now, God has a dream and a destiny for every person. Um, just like Joseph, we're going to have to, we're going to have to pass some tests before we find fulfillment in that. Um, I think in, in Joseph, we learn that even though he might have not been there in the beginning necessarily, we find that through him, that, that great character in Joseph's life supported the great destiny that God, God had for him. And I think that over the next few weeks as we continue in this, that God is going to help each one of us to understand that He has a purpose. He has a purpose for our lives and that, that He is fully in control of every detail of our life. And He has given us gifts and direction to accomplish that, those purposes. And if we will set the course and be faithful, just like Joseph, we will find that we fulfill God's purposes that He has for us and we pass the purpose test in this life. Thank you, guys.